histology. We're going to start talking about the nervous system today. So in really the first uh, show here on this one, we're really just going to talk about just what is the nervous system and just kind of the basic cell of the nervous system, which is the neuron. Uh, with the second show, we'll take a look a little bit about the support cells of the nervous system, which are the neuroglial cells. And then in the final show, we'll actually take a look at the, some of the main parts of the central nervous system. So things like the cerebrum, cerebellum, and the spinal cord. So the nervous system, we really can subdivide it into two main parts. Uh, we have the central nervous system, which is the brain and the spinal cord. And then the peripheral nervous system is everything that is not that pretty much. So it's going to be all your spinal nerves and all of your cranial nerves. Uh, we're going to see in the peripheral components, you generally are going to have motor and sensory parts to that. And you can kind of see overall here pointing at uh, the different parts here. So the central nervous system, like I said, brain and spinal cord down the center of this right here, where the peripheral nervous system is looking at these spinal nerves here, as well as the cranial nerves that you'd see up in the head. And again, on a lot of this, we really have, I mean, in reality, you have three main parts to the central nervous system. You have the sensory neurons, which are afferent neurons. These are carrying information, stimuli back from the periphery to the central nervous system. You're going to have efferent motor neurons. Uh, these are taking commands from the central nervous system and taking those out to the different body parts. We're going to see in both these afferent or sensory and the efferent or motor that both of these are going to have a visceral component to them, which is that autonomic nervous system, that part that you don't have conscious control over, as well as a somatic part, which is stuff that you either have conscious control over or conscious awareness in terms of sensory. And you can kind of see this at the bottom here, afferent system here, the sensory system, there's a visceral sensory and a somatic sensory. Somatic is what you'd have... Uh, conscious awareness of, visceral, things like blood pressure, things like that, you wouldn't. Uh, somatic motor is the stuff you have conscious control over your muscles, where the visceral motor is going to be that sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous systems, those things that are going to influence a lot of body systems, but that you do not have voluntary control over. And when it really comes to the nervous system, we're looking at two main cell types within the nervous system, uh, two major classes at least. Those are going to be your neurons, which are the impulse producing cells that are going to send messages throughout the body. And then outside of that are going to be the glial cells. These are the cells that uh, are support cells. There's a number of different types of those, which you'll see in our second show of this. But today we're just going to look at the neurons and what, they, what their parts are and just kind of give a little bit of the basics of the neuron. So the neurons, like I said, are the true nerve cells. These are the ones that are going to be sending impulses either to or from the central nervous system or within the central nervous system. Uh, there is certain cells that are housed only in the central nervous system. Those are generally referred to as inner neurons. But today we're just going to look at overall the neurons. So what this is a picture of here, you can see the main cell bodies of some of these neurons where the arrows are pointing at it here and here. Uh, we're going to see that a neuron is going to have this main cell body and then a number of extensions depending on the type of neuron that are going to be branching off this. A lot of times I use my hand as the example of that. So this would be the cell body and we're going to see that you have different processes going either bringing messages into that neuron or taking messages out of it. So you can see in the neuronal cell body here large nucleus with a prominent nucleolus. Within these as well you're going to see uh, what is called nissle bodies or nissle substance in the cytoplasm. This is actually rough endoplasmic reticulum that is quite prominent in these cells. Uh, it's mainly because they're producing a lot of neurotransmitters that are going to be used by these cells. Again, not something that we get into too much in histology, but something that definitely, if you were to take a neurobiology course, you would discuss in detail some of these different neurotransmitters. So again, you can see a picture of a neuron, and I will show you a slide that's going to look somewhat similar to this, but again, you can see that cell body in the center here and all these extensions traveling out from that center part there. A lot of these nuclei we're seeing in between these large purple neurons here, those are going to be some of those support cells that we'll talk about in the second episode of this. So a neuron, at least in the most standard form, which is this type right here, which would be generally referred to as a multipolar neuron, you're going to see you have a main cell body, 
Uh, we have a number of these extensions on the outside here called dendrites. These are going to be taking incoming messages from other neurons synapsing with those and taking these potentials to this, uh, the center of the cell here, to the cell body. We then are going to have one main extension that's going to leave this. This is going to be taking the outgoing message. This is called the axon. So like it says there, one axon per neuron. You can have a number of dendrites, but one axon per neuron. And what's the beginning of that is referred to as the axon hillock. This is where the uh, cell pretty much makes the decision to send a message or not. Uh, we can see that there can be some branches of that axon called collaterals, but again, one main, one leaving the cell body. It can branch to a few other areas further up the axon. As we get to the end, you'll see a lot of branching at the end here to these uh, axon terminals. It's probably the easiest thing to call them. This is where those neurotransmitters are going to be released from those synaptic end bulbs. Like it says here, lots of filaments in these to provide structure. If you stain with silver stain, you can see those. Usually it's dark black within them. Again, dendrites, usually a large number of these ones. These are pretty much like branches on a tree. That's actually where it gets its name from. Dendros is Greek for tree. Uh, that is going to be what's bringing in these incoming messages to that neuron cell body. Uh, branch to provide a lot of surface area, the opportunity for a lot of synapses. And like it says there, dendritic spines are some little protrusions from these ones that can receive stuff from uh, synapse. Uh, there is some plasticity in this where a student, where they can, uh, more of these can be generated or not within the bot, within the neuron. So this is showing you a cell. These would be all the dendrites on the outside here. Again, this is with a silver stain, which is why it's nice and black on this one. Uh, this is kind of showing you a really blurry zoom in on these dendritic spines, which can be branches that form within these dendrites. Uh, again, depending on the cell, you have some that are very, very, very branched. Uh, so your motor neurons are like the pretty standard ones here. Those multipolar neurons, a number of dendrites, a main axon that branches. Some of the cells that have the most synapses are the Purkinje cells. These are found in the cerebellum. There is a large, large number of dendrites on these. They're absolutely huge. This is kind of actually not showing all of them on this one. Uh, these are some of those cells that can have up to 200,000 incoming messages or synapses on them. And then you see some other ones like these pyramidal cells, not nearly as much in terms of that branching. And then we have a few like uh, sensory cells that might have a few dendrites right at the very beginning and then just one dendrite, one axon, kind of like what it's shown here on this granule cell down here. The axons, like I said, are usually a single axon. Uh, it has a pretty consistent diameter. Like I said, as you get further down, you might get some collaterals off of this, but it's generally one outgoing one. And like I said, that axon hillock is that cone-shaped structure that is going to be the start of that axon. And like I said, they're, these are usually a lot longer, but we'll see, than the dendrites are. Uh, they do sometimes rename a lot of the stuff. The cytoplasm, the axon, a lot of times they talk about being axoplasm. Uh, gonna have a number of cell structural components in there, a large number of mitochondria. Things it doesn't have are things like ribosomes, uh, rough ER, that's all up in that actual cell body. And what we're going to see is if somehow you actually sever an axon, the part that is not connected to the cell body is going to be the part that will not survive that. Uh, depending on where this neuron is at, it may be able to regenerate that axon. If it's a peripheral neuron in the peripheral nervous system, it can. A lot of times in the central nervous system, it's not going to be able to do that regeneration of that axon. Uh, when we talk about neurons, a lot of times we'll talk about how they synapse. So what you're going to have is you're going to have a neuron, the end of a neuron coming into the area here. This would be the presynaptic neuron. You're going to have a synapse, and then where it's connecting with the next neuron is going to be the postsynaptic neuron or structure. And if you were to take AMP, we'd talk about these presynaptic and postsynaptic potentials, and then talk about the neurotransmitters that are connecting between that. So the next uh, picture here shows you that example a little bit. Again, we're not going to get into how all this is regulated or what causes this. But again, you can see the synaptic end bulb going down to that next neuron. 
the presynaptic neuron would be the one on the top, the postsynaptic is the one on the bottom. You can see they don't actually connect like this, but there's a space in between. That is that synaptic cleft, and it's going to be pretty much this presynaptic neuron releasing neurotransmitters that are going to bind to receptors for those neurotransmitters on the postsynaptic cell. So what we'll do on the next show after we get through this one here, we'll talk a little bit about these support cells. But the last thing to really kind of hit at on these ones is we can see there is three, there's technically actually four, but three that I'm going to point out to everybody in this show uh, of these neurons. So we have what are called multipolar neurons. These are ones that really favor the dendritic branching, so lots of branches, one axon leaving. Uh, the next one we see is a bipolar neuron. It has a dendritic tree on one end, but pretty much then one main dendrite bringing stuff to the cell body, and then one main axon that may have some branching on the end of it going out the other side. We're a unipolar neuron. It has a dendritic tree on this end, and then what you're gonna see is it's Basically, this dendrite is also kind of continuous with the axon here, and it's going to travel all the way down to this far end. We see this a lot with, uh, for example, sensory neurons would do this quite a bit. They have that single one here because, again, they're not really processing a lot of it. They're just relaying that message from out at wherever the receptor is to the rest of the body. Uh, we'll come back to bipolar neurons a lot when we actually take a look at the retina. So the center picture on the bottom there is actually showing you that uh, this middle layer of nuclei right here is actually the bipolar cell layer. We see a lot of these bipolar type neurons in the retina, for example. So like I said, next time we'll talk about the glial cells and then we'll do some of the main parts of the central nervous system. I'll be a real quick one just showing you these. And this is actually a spinal cord smear of neurons. Uh, you can see some of the pinkish stuff here. What we're actually going to be looking at is these smaller structures in the center. So if we zoom in a little bit, and the main thing on these ones is just being able to identify these as neurons, identifying some of the processes as processes is definitely something I would think would be fair game in the nucleus and some of that nissel substance. So you can see here's a couple neurons in the field of view. So there's a neuron right there. You can see its nucleus right there, these extensions coming off of it, and that granular stuff in the cytoplasm right here would be the nissel substance. So for at least just generalized neurons, that is what I expect you to be able to identify.